I'm Paul, and this is my wife Janet, and we've been married going on 46 years. Well, we met at Owasso College in Owasso, Michigan, and um, I had I had gone there with my sister right after high school graduation, which. I figured out is 50 years ago this year since my high school graduation. Um, so I was there a year and um, I was planning to just go the one year, but I, I went back the second year and that was the year that Paul came. He was with the freshman class, but he had worked at the store for a year before he came to college. So, um, so that's, you know, that's when I first met him. We weren't dating at that point, and, um, but it was at our Christian college, so that was, that was pretty cool. I thought she was very pretty, and uh, I loved her smile, but I thought, oh, she's an upperclassman coming from high school. I was thinking, she wouldn't want anything to do with a lower classman. <laughs> so it took me a while, and we were both quiet, so it took us a while to get acquainted. Mm -hmm. Paul had been in a serious car accident for his first semester at college and uh, one of the girls in the dorm was killed and, uh, and he had to leave school that semester to recover and so um, we had sent, my sister and I had sent him a card and uh, so when he came back to school second semester um, we were just you know, looking to get better acquainted, and so um, it took, I don't know, that whole semester, I guess, for us to kind of get acquainted, and then um, the more we were together, the more we felt like we belonged together, you know, but we weren't actually dating until like the end of the semester, and we started, when I went home for the summer, we wrote, wrote. <laughs> we wrote letters. We wrote letters back and forth then, and um, so then that was that was special because that was a nice way to get acquainted with him. You know, he was telling me about beautiful northern Michigan and um, working in the grocery store with his dad, and um, you know, I thought that sounded pretty neat. And um, so I was looking forward to going back in the fall, and that's when we started dating. So our first date was, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure when our first date was. <laughs> Maybe the dairy aisle or something like that yeah. where we could get a giant cone for a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I think we went to like a citywide crusade. Um, and, but our official dating, I knew it was serious when he bought uh, season tickets for the travel log. <laughs> they had such things yes. back then. <laughs> and so it was going to be like once a month we would go and see these pictures of the world where people had been and tell about their trips and everything. And it just made a nice evening out for us. We would probably get a bite to eat. And, uh, so that's when, we, that's when we started dating. And then eventually he took me up to meet his uh, Mom, Dad. It was kind of uh, special when we were, well, we would do different activities together. One of the things we did was to visit a, like a nursing home, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a student ministry kind of thing. So we were in the same group, and he was maybe driving a group of us there. And on the way back from that ministry, we stopped at one of the girls' relatives' home. And uh, some of the kids were gathered around the piano singing and we were talking, get, getting better acquainted. And uh, he started talking about how he had an aunt and uncle that lived in Frankfort, Indiana. And so it turned out that I had known his aunt and uncle growing up and I had admired them, you know. So I thought, man, you know, Paul is so special and so fun to be with and so good looking and now I know his family and I thought this is perfect you know so it made me feel like I'd really you know I just felt really comfortable with him that I could really trust him and know what he was like and 
that we had so much in common, which was really neat. Fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I just knew that we belonged together because we just enjoyed the same things. We were like personalities and we had similar upbringings and so I decided this was the one and we had dated six months and I took her up to my parents on our winter break and so one evening I proposed and it took me a long time <laughs> to get it out because I was afraid she was going to say it's too soon. I didn't think she would say all right no but <laughs> I thought she was going to say it's too soon to ask but she didn't. She said yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> well that Christmas uh, before that he proposed in January uh, the Christmas before he had come down to my house and um, the gift that he gave me was a little white Bible inscribed with how much he loved me in it. And so I thought, ah, oh, he must be really serious. So <laughs> I wasn't surprised when he asked me about a month later to marry him. And so I was I was thrilled to say yes. She was getting a little nervous with my heart beating. <laughs> <laughs> what is he going to say? <laughs> we took time to pick out a ring together and uh, before we made it a public announcement. And so it was around Valentine's Day when we announced our engagement then. But every year we still celebrate the 23rd of January when he had proposed and um, so. So the day she got her ring, we, I was working in the school cafeteria and so we were having a banquet that night so she helped me serve. So she got to show off her ring while she was serving. <laughs> We got married in 1967, and uh, June, it was 24th. June 24th, it turned out to be a, a rainy day, which was kind of disappointing. In fact, a, a tornado actually went through, <laughs> touched down on the intersection where my family and I were staying that night before the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every bride dreams of a perfect weather day, you know, but so it didn't turn out to be perfect weather day, but... Um, and but the it, church had no air conditioning. Yeah. Nobody opened any windows or anything. It was very warm in there. <laughs> <laughs> Muggy. My veil fell off while he was kissing me. While I was trying to. <laughs> I leaned in to kiss her. <laughs> and my and head she kept was backing too. away. I thought, what's going on here? <laughs> and I realized her veil fell on the floor, and we all stood there and looked at it. <laughs> she went over and picked it up and put it back on. <laughs> then she kissed me. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was a memorable day. Yeah, here, here we are on our wedding day. This was uh, leaving after the ceremony. Um, I'd put my veil back on, so, <laughs> so we were good. It was a simple wedding, but it was uh, very special. And uh, the pastor who married us was uh, Pastor Barefoot, and he ended up being a teacher in the community. And, um, and of course, after we married, then we were heading to Michigan. We were, you know, so uh, being, he was from out of state, it was kind of tricky to pull off the wedding, you know, an out of state family came. And I had rented an apartment. We were planning to live in married student housing, but it was being built and it wasn't going to be finished in time. So in the summer, I got an apartment in the basement of this older lady's house. It was a fairly nice apartment, except the shower was on the opposite side of the stairs as the rest of the And she usually rented to four girls while she would come down and do her laundry. And there was no door between us, so we never knew when someone was coming. <laughs> so we left in this apartment for a month and a half or so. This was when you were at Central Michigan University yes. in Mount and Pleasant, Michigan. I had a job lined up that was supposed to start in July, we got married in June. Well, again, they were building a building and it didn't get finished, so I didn't have a job. So we had a long honeymoon, <laughs> <laughs> lived on a few savings, 
and till I don't know, within a month and a half, we went up and I worked in my father's grocery store for a month or so while we were waiting for my job to open up, which opened up in September then. So. <laughs> I thought every bride should be able to have at least a two-month honeymoon <laughs> because, uh, you know, it just was so nice. Um, neither one of us were working. <laughs> People were feeling sorry for us, but we were having the time of our sort lives. Sort of like now. <laughs> <laughs> we would, you know, read stories to each other. We would, I mean, it wasn't like we spent a lot of money, but we, we cooked together, we took walks together, you know, we just had the time of our lives. And so, so that was special. Um, and we knew that it, he would eventually get a job uh, because he had already been hired, but the job just hadn't started yet. So, and then uh, when we left our little basement apartment there in Mount Pleasant, um, where'd we go then? Where That's when we went to, uh, back to Michigan and stayed yeah. in a cabin for a month or so. My uncle had a cabin that we could stay in, and worked at the grocery store, and we moved back on Labor Day. Back to Mount Pleasant. Where we both started classes at Central Michigan. But where were we living then? Isn't that when we yes. moved into the reservation? Yes, we moved into <laughs> an Indian reservation. <laughs> they had built apart new apartments for the Indians, and they wanted to bring their whole extended family, and these were one-bedroom apartments, so they wouldn't move in, and so they rented them to college couples based on your income. Very cheap. <laughs> yeah, I believe our first month's rent, our first year of rent was like $47 a month. <laughs> and it included our utilities too, didn't it? Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. <laughs> it was a very basic apartment, but it was uh -huh. nice and new. Yeah. And that's where we were at when, um, when we were expecting Rachel, our Rachel, and um, she was born in November of 1968 and uh, while we were living on the Indian Reservation so um, I look now at all these um, you know young couples that have a whole nursery all decorated with a theme and everything we were happy to have one little shelf <laughs> and a place for a baby a bed, in, a our, bed in, our <laughs> in our room <laughs> we just had the one bedroom and uh, it worked out fine David came along about a year later. 11 months to be exact. <laughs> that was during the Vietnam War, so unfortunately, um, while Rachel was still very young, hadn't had her first birthday yet, and I was expecting David, and Paul was drafted and uh, had to... At that time, we had moved into a two-bedroom apartment. We were all excited about, you know, having more space and then his mom and dad brought the letter, you know, saying it was your turn. <laughs> so, um, because I was expecting and his mother wasn't working outside the home, um, we decided it would be best if I lived with them. So, um, Rachel and I went up and lived with his mom and dad for about four months while he was drafted and sent to Fort Knox and then straight on to Fort Sam Houston. Houston, Houston in San Antonio. I didn't get a break so I didn't get to see David till he was two months old because my class, advanced training was starting immediately so that was really hard um, but she was good about writing me every day and sending me cookies and goodies <laughs> <laughs> and pictures. And his family was very good to me they were they were very good to me, so it was nice, you know, that Rachel got lots of attention with his family, and um, <laughs> she had her first birthday without her daddy there. And David arrived, you know, it was heartbreaking. It was just, you know, we, we knew it was the season, and we knew we we knew things could be worse. There were people losing their, you know, family to Vietnam, and and it turned out that we we got stationed in Georgia. We didn't have to go to Vietnam, so that was a 
That was a blessing. Yes. 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 And I, <laughs> I had my Christmas break. I came home and we went back to Texas together. We were there till March and then we moved to Georgia for the rest of the time. I think our faith has always, always been our anchor um, because, you know, we know that that verse, if you seek first his kingdom, then other things will be added on unto you. So um, we've just always felt like we would be okay, really, no matter what, if God was with us. And we knew that God would never leave us or forsake us. So. And Janet was very good about never acting like she felt like she was deprived of anything, never saying, well, I have to have this. I could hardly get her to buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so I never felt pressured that way, that she was suffering from my inability to provide more. <laughs> <laughs> when we were in the Army, we used to joke about some of our... Uh, we were on a pretty tight budget with food, we joke about some of our food combinations, you know, because we kind of just learned to make do with whatever we had, and um, but we got by fine. <laughs> well, I actually took all of my check from the army, all of the check that she got because we had kids, half of hers to pay for our rent. So then we had that little bit left over. <laughs> so it wasn't because we had a lot of things. <laughs> It was such a different world back then, too. You didn't have to have quite so much stuff for your kids as, right. <laughs> as everybody thinks they have to have now. And but, we had we had family, too, so we always knew that... You and know, church family that helped, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So those things made a difference. We got connected into a really good church when we were in Georgia. And, uh, you know, they treated us like we were family down there. And, and our families got to come and visit us too. And now that I'm a grandmother, I realize how painful that was for them, for me to take off and go south with their grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were in Georgia and we obviously had very limited income. But we had cute kids. Yes, so we decided we were gonna make a little photo album of things we did with them and for our parents, which is what we did. And they both kept them and we have them now, I guess, and it was just a fun thing to do, and we had our first real Christmas tree that year, and we decorated it with paper ornaments that the kids had colored and popcorn, uh, and our presents basically were what our family had sent us, but it was a great Christmas. <laughs> we're still the same people <laughs> in this picture, but... I think we're closer, we definitely understand each other better, and we're more in love than we were then. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, um, well, I've heard people say, that, how do you spell love, T-I-M-E, you know, time together. So um, when, when I started teaching, um, that was a new season of life because um, our kids were junior high age and um, I mean it, it and he was teaching and we but we were so we were busier you know but we were so thankful that we had summer break I mean it kind of yes. helped you to come back to reality you know and kind of reconnect even better as a family you know just have some time to downtime you know and everything so so that was really nice. Um, nice to be off when our kids were off, you know, for vacations and things. So, so we felt like our careers were, were family-friendly kind of careers, you know, that helped. Raising teenagers is never particularly fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we were thankful that our kids were um, involved in church and never complained about going to church with us and um, you know we're thankful for good youth group leaders and college and career pastors and you know all the good examples that they had from from people in their lives that helped uh, steer them in the right direction and, and church was 
a priority. We didn't have to wake up every Sunday and say, shall we go to church or not go to church? We went when the doors were open, we were there. Well, we're really pleased to see our children following after God, and, and they make us really proud. It's, and our grandchildren are probably the best there are, so <laughs> we love having some of them close to us part of the time. And, uh, miss the ones that are away. It is special to be grandparents. I mean, I think um, it kind of gives you a, I don't know, you get all the fun of being parents without all the responsibilities, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's just, I think, you know, as your grandparents, you're a lot more patient and you realize how fleeting time is and how precious moments are, you know. So I think we treasure even more our, our time with our grandkids. And so it's been fun to take them on a few vacations with us. and. They're very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> so we we love we love them and love our time together and every moment with them. It's hard to believe that Hannah, our oldest, is graduating from high school. <laughs> but we're proud. We know she'll do well. She's been a great example and I feel like I keep growing. I need to, <laughs> and I had a long ways to go. But uh, that's what made us feel at home wherever we were, because we always had a church family, and and God remained constant. And you know, He He brought about amazing things for us that we never expected. <laughs> I think that we, the older we get, the more we realize how mundane those little things are that can sometimes seem so huge when you're going through them. But so often it's just from fatigue or misunderstanding or um, a lack of communication or something. I mean, the, we've never had any really huge issues but you know there are occasions when we disagree but learning how to to express your feelings without you know hurting the other person takes some takes some time <laughs> you know and patience and um, I think that you know we certainly didn't get it all right in the beginning but we you know, we were always willing to give each other grace and forgiveness, and so that goes a long ways. And we didn't ever use the D words. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't an option. Right. Yeah. Now, Paul is very good about uh, keeping romance alive in our marriage. Um, he, um, well, he just makes sure we do special things. We still have our date nights and uh, special times together. We have a little getaway planned each uh, for a weekend of each month this year. Um, he brings me flowers, he writes sweet notes, he gives me wonderful cards, gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, one of the things we've started going since going to Freedom Church, started doing since going to Freedom Church was, um, I think, Maybe uh, Ryan and Sunshine shared this idea with Shane and Rachel. Anyway, they shared it with the church to uh, keep a, a notebook that you, um, you vow to pursue your number two, God being number one. And so uh, we've had fun doing that. You writing. just write something in it every so often. Hide, Hide it. it <laughs> Let the other person find it and read the note. And it's it's amazing how words on paper can be so special, and especially in your own handwriting. I think that's extra special. So um, I'm glad Paul's willing to do all those special things with me. Makes me feel young and beautiful. <laughs> 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 we
We, we like to play Scrabble. Mm -hmm. We like to garden. Some, t some years it's easier than others. Yes. <laughs> we, we like taking walks together. State parks are one of our favorite places. Mm -hmm. What else do we do? <laughs> everything, really. We I do mean, about everything together. I mean, we're, we're best friends, you know. I think. We lead a small group. We attend a small group. He takes me shopping. He, um, I still have to talk her into buying something for us. <laughs> <laughs> we just... We, we like vacationing together. We enjoy being together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking back at this point, we feel very blessed. I mean, we're <laughs> we we couldn't have dreamed it, our marriage would turn out this beautiful, really. I mean, when you're growing up, you look at the people in front of you, you know. And we were blessed with grandparents and parents who had been had long, successful marriages, and so um, we were working toward that ourselves, but, um, you know, when you're in the, in the thick of it, <laughs> early on, <laughs> it takes a while, I think, to, to figure out, you know, what, what kinds of things um, are what really contribute to a healthy marriage, you know, but, um, Paul's always been very patient with me and um, I think it positive. just keeps getting better as the yeah. years go on because we already know each other so well that we know what's going to irritate and what's not, what's worth fighting about and what's not. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we still enjoy doing everything together. <laughs> I remember the the summer that I lost my engagement ring, um, we were uh, living at a little rental house over in Gadsden, our first uh, location after moving down to Indiana from Michigan, and um, the kids were kindergarten, first grade age, and um, I was pulling some weeds out of our little garden, and looked down and suddenly realized my engagement ring was not there. And so I looked through every place I'd been, you know, searched all over, recruited the whole family to start searching everything, you know. We didn't rent a metal detector, maybe that's no. what we should have done, but um, that was, uh, you know, I felt so horrible that I'd lost my engagement ring, but um, Paul was very understanding. He didn't say, I'll run right out and buy you another one. <laughs> but, <laughs> we, did, we did get another one, but anyway, I had it for quite a while, and then I the lost The diamond it. came I out of it. <laughs> I, lost it. <laughs> I lost the diamond. Uh, so, um, so I, you know, I, I was able to keep my husband, but I had trouble with <laughs> rings. <laughs> but uh, in 1995, I just came across the card today that, um, that he gave me this ring. And so um, it's, I've had it checked at the jewelry and they said, you know, it's, it's good. It's still in good condition <laughs> and it's snug enough that I don't think it'll be falling off. But I thought that was really sweet that he replaced the rings that I had lost. And, and then when he gave me this one, he, he also included the little poem um, with this ring. We were going to use it as part of our wedding ceremony because they didn't really have a ring ceremony as part of the wedding ceremony uh, back then, but uh, I guess we... Just, I think I chickened out. I memorized it and then I took it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was so sweet that he'd written that poem out and um, gave it to me when he gave me this ring. So, so it was almost like renewing our vows again, even though it was done informally. It was special. <laughs> with this ring, with this ring I offer you the golden years that are to be. 
And when it is no longer new, you still will mean the world to me. You'll be a part of every dream, each loving thought I ever own. Time cannot dull its steady gleam, and you will never walk alone. With this ring I offer you, the hopes of which you are a part, and pray that I will never do a hurting thing to break your heart. I offer you this life of mine, its sunshine and its sudden rain, and may my life be ever kind, nor ever be the cause of pain. With this ring I offer you the world of beauty that I knew, for till you came I never knew such tender things could matter so. No pardon can there ever be, for as the waves seek out the shore, may you share you share my very heart with me, and we are one forevermore. Old words, but still from my heart. <laughs> Always love you, Jan. Happy birthday. <laughs> that was special. Had been, when we were living in Michigan, we'd been down to visit her family here. Went back home, and I realized on the way home I didn't have my ring, and I must have lost it at your parents. So they looked all over, couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. About six months later, we were selling a car and getting a different one. And I was cleaning everything out under the seat. I found my ring. <laughs> and I haven't lost it since. I can't get it off now. But... <laughs> you have the original. Yes. My wedding band is the original. Yeah. Uh, I like snuggling with her. I like... She takes good care of me. She feeds me good. She is an inspiration to follow. And she... She keeps me strong, and she's pretty patient, <laughs> and, but she can boot me along when I need it to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm constantly amazed at Paul. I mean, he's just um, so reliable, dependable, trustworthy, um, such a hard worker. Um, he, he can do anything. I mean, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> he can, and um, you know, so he's, you know, I'm, I'm just so thankful that he's um, always willing to give a helping hand anything I need help with. Um, he was a great father to our kids, um, great husband. Um, I especially am enjoying this season of our lives because um, we just give each other more attention, you know, and he's good about it giving me pats and hugs and throughout the day, and that's really special, so I, I think touching is my love language, so he's good about that. I, I fell in love with his sparkly eyes, and he had um, blonde, golden blonde hair, those blue sparkly eyes, and um, now I love his white hair, he's handsome. <laughs> He's special. <laughs> I well. have to cut some of that. <laughs> She's blind. <laughs> you have to be sure you know who you're marrying. And then you have to pursue that person. And it doesn't stop after you say, I do. You have to keep pursuing. And I guess that's what I've tried to do. And you know, we had we had so many things in common, and like faith, and, and that made the whole difference of whether or not we could survive the storms. I would think that it's important to make your home your focus, your relationship with your husband a priority. Um, don't get so focused on the kids that you, you know, forget your husband. Um, I think that. Um, all the, all the thing, all the seeds of love that you can sow into your relationship can reap big dividends in, in your children's lives and in your life in the, in the years ahead. You know, so it's just really important to, to uh, value what you have and you know be content with with your relationship and uh, but yet you know do everything you can to help it to grow. It's basically as we grow in our faith, our marriage has grown as well, because you know the Bible is all about you know living for the other person's good and loving one another, forgiving one another. 
I love 1 Corinthians 13. I mean, that's the best marriage advice in the world. <laughs> you know, love is patient, love is kind. Um, you know, keep no record of wrongs. Um, all of those things. So as we, as we try to keep our priorities right and just reading God's Word and other Christian books, we've, we've uh, felt like we've continued to grow. We've stayed connected to a church and, and got involved. Um, and what you said about keeping the records of wrongs, I mean, we have had disagreements, but you know, she does. She never remembers them or brings them up to me again when we something I've done that upset her. I just love your sparkly smile. <laughs> That's what attracted to me to you in the first place. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet.